Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So the NEET PG results are out. A huge congratulations to everyone who have done really well and got amazing ranks. On the same note, my heart goes out to all the students who couldn't perform well and are unhappy with their results. But remember, one exam cannot define your caliber, your life. You can always go back, revisit what happened, what went wrong, take a break and again come back stronger next year and get out of this competition to pursue your dreams. However, in this video, I wanted to talk about DNB. I was getting a lot of messages regarding what this DNB is all about and what is the comparison between MDMS and DNB and should we go for it or not. So there are many rankers who are still confused with the rank they have got and they are not much confidence whether they'll get something or not or whether their rank will turn out into a clinical branch or not. So if you're worried about all those things and if you really want to know what this DNB is all about and if you are favoring your chances of getting your dream branch, I think this video is for you. I will be talking everything about DNB. What are the courses being provided? How you should choose an institute? And at the end, I will share everything about my institute and why I chose DNB over MD. When I got a rank of 5329, I was very confused how to get my dream branch. But today I am pursuing my dream branch as general medicine. So I hope this video can give you a perspective of what DNB courses are all about. But before we start, hi, I'm Dr. Nishan. I'm currently pursuing general medicine. I'm a third year resident at Apollo Hospital, Guwahati. And if you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon and so that you don't miss on such videos in future. So let's begin. So what is DNB? DNB stands for Diplomate of National Board. It is a post-graduation degree which is being offered by NBEMS, that is National Board of Examination for Medical Sciences. This is the same board which conducts NEET PG, NEET SS and many other courses all over India. These courses are mostly run in the corporate hospitals rather than the medical colleges and also few government hospitals run these courses like railway hospitals and so on. So the basic similarities between MDMS course and DNB. So both are post-graduation courses which you can pursue after MBBS. Duration of a DNB course is same as MDMS that is three years. In both you have to do a thesis or a research work and the courses, the books you study, the cases you see, the clinical practice is almost similar. In the stipend or salary, it is similar to the MDMS PG resident of that particular state. For example, you are in Maharashtra and you are doing DNB in Maharashtra. So your salary will be equivalent or a bit more to the PG resident of the medical college of that state. Then coming to the core differences between MDMS and DNB. So in MD, this is run by the government hospital, that is the medical colleges and the private medical colleges. Whereas DNB, they are run by corporate hospitals mostly and few government hospitals. So the corporate hospitals like the Apollo Group of Hospitals, Sir Gangaram Hospital, Max Hospital, Fortis, etc. Then the examination board in MDMS varies from state to state and it is the local university there. And in DNB, it is run by NB, where they conduct the theory exams twice in a year and followed by practical examinations. So everything is done by a central board. Exams in MDMS, they are conducted within the same college by the same professors you have worked under. So the passing rate is comparatively higher. Whereas in DNB, the theory exams are conducted in various centers across India. So they have nothing to do with your institute and also the practical examinations are not conducted in your same hospital. So there is no connection whatsoever with the consultants you have worked with. So that slight advantage is definitely missing. But the passing percentage is improving every year, particularly in subjects like medicine, general surgery, anesthesia and so on. It's really good. Few concerns are there for orthopedics and pediatrics, but still it is improving. In MDMS, you have a bond after three years of your post-graduation so that varies from state to state but in DNB you don't have to serve any bond you're free to go and join any hospital after you have completed your three years post-graduation. In MD quantity of cases is never an issue because it's a government medical college you've got a lot of patients of a particular case but quality of cases can be an issue when diagnosis is not done till the end but in DNB hospitals quantity can be a question where you not get so many cases compared to medical colleges but quality of cases are not an issue because in a corporate hospital, most of the time, the investigations are completed. The patient stays throughout the treatment course. So you get to see the entire course of the disease and how patient responded. And they also come up for follow-up. So from that aspect, the quality of cases are good. But quantity is always a question. For surgical branches, hands-on is not an issue in a government hospital. But for DNB courses, Hands-on is an issue, but that also varies from center to center for which you should contact the senior who is pursuing the surgical branches there and have a direct overview about everything which is going on in different centers. In MDMS, you get a lot of OPDs, but in uh, DNB, OPD is lacking. 
most of the centers don't have a separate OPD for the DNB residents, but you can always request your consultants to allow you to sit with them in the OPD and have an exposure of the OPD. Moreover, in residents, you get a lot of exposure to patients when you see them in the emergencies, in the wards. So learning is not much hampered, but exposure to OPD is limited. And also, if you are pursuing a broad specialty like general medicine or general surgery, you are also eligible to go for the MCH or the DM examination. That is a neat SS examination, even if you have a DNB degree. So that is also not an issue if you want to pursue super specialty in future. Now the question is why to choose DNB? So if you're getting your dream branch, you can definitely consider going for a DNB course rather than going for MD or MS of a branch which you are not considering before. Especially medical allied branches, you should definitely consider DNB as a choice. For surgical branches, you can still go for that, but you should always call up the seniors from that institute and have an overview of the hands-on and the exposure. Number three, there is no bond. Then the question about DNB and MD in a peripheral college. So I would always say you should always go for DNB in a good city, in a good institute, rather than going for MD of the same branch in a peripheral college or a new college. Why? Because many resources are lacking in the new college, in a peripheral college. Peripheral colleges or the new setups are generally a referral center. And PG residents are not benefited much because of the lack of resources. So choosing a DNB institute in that place with a good setup is always a choice. Then in a good corporate hospital, you always get the updated methods, updated tests, and you have access to every latest uh, technologies and the investigations. So when you get to see what is going on, you learn better. Then for DNB, there are regular classes. The academics are good from the NBMS side. So the national board is conducting classes every week for every branch, which is conducted online on a platform. You can join and you can learn and also conduct examinations from their end in the second year which gives you an experience of writing exams for dnb before you appear for the final exams the third year and finally you get a fixed 30 days leave every year so that is a 90 days of total leave over the three years that is a very good relief for the pg residents which is strictly followed in dnb courses compared to the mdms where the leaves are not even considered so these are a few pointers which i believe you can go for dnb of your dream branch rather than going for an MD or MS of some other branch which we are not considering or choosing an MD of a peripheral college. Coming to the question why I chose DNB over MD MS. So I had a complete clarity on my dream branch. I always wanted to pursue medicine. So with the rank I had, I had an All India rank of 5329 and I was not much sure whether I'll get a MD medicine seat in a government hospital or not. I started doing my research about DNB. Then I came across cutoffs which was favoring my needs. So in the medicine seats cutoff generally goes up to 14, 15,000 All India ranks. So that's a good sign if you're not willing to give up on your branch. So this opens up the opportunity for the candidates with a mid rank to choose their dream branch rather than compromise on their dream branch. So in this way, I got to know about DNB. And after doing my research, I found out that in second or third round of counseling, I might get MD medicine in a peripheral college or a new college, but then as I told, I had my points. I was getting a better institute with all better facilities to go for DNB of the same branch. So I chose DNB General Medicine over MD of a government hospital or a new college. These were my reasons. Your reasons could differ, but you should definitely consider a few points before compromising on your dream branch. Now, how to choose an institute? So these are a few points which I considered while making a list of institutes which I would go. And you should note this down. So first thing is the place. So for example, you are from Delhi and you don't want to go south of India. So you should not even consider researching those institutes. Similarly, if you are from South India and you don't want to come towards uh, Central India or towards Northeast India. So again, you should not waste your time researching about the institutes from that places. So first, you should be very clear about the places where you want to go so that you can narrow down the list of institutes which you can call up and have an inquiry about. Then you should know the caseload or number of patients of the branch you are considering. Then the latest procedures or hands-on which you get in that particular institute. Then obviously the working environment about the basic facilities and everything. Then academics, whether there are clinical case discussions or not. Then the super specialty or the rotation postings, particularly in branches like general medicine or general surgery, where it's not an end branch and exposure to super specialty might give you an interest for your future options. And most important, the consultants under whom 
will be working. For example, when uh, I chose my institute, I also inquired about consultants under whom I will be learning. And I found out that they are quite famous uh, physicians of this part of the country. So invariably, you will get a good load of patients under them and the exposure to learn will be good. So you can always do a research of an institute on these points for choosing your institute. Lastly, about my own institutes, this is my hospital, Apollo Hospital, Guwahati, which is in Assam. And if you ask me about the caseload, it's pretty good. There are good varieties. It is a 220 bedded hospitals of which every day about 15 to 20 cases are admitted under general medicine in each unit. So we have two units here where at any day there are about 40 to 50 patients admitted under general medicine, both in ICU and in wards. About case discussions with the consultants in rounds, it's really good. We have good opportunity to discuss about the cases which we are seeing with our consultants and they are very friendly. Rotation postings are also there in the super specialty, especially in the second year. We get the opportunity to work under various branches like gastroenterology, nephrology and cardiology, ICU, emergency. So we get to see how each department works and also in my institute, we have super specialty courses also of gastroenterology, nephrology. So we get to discuss cases with senior residents as well. So that's a plus point. If there are super specialty courses in your institute, that gives you a better exposure. Then coming to academics, it's pretty decent. We have weekly seminars. We have case discussions, case presentations. Then there are also seminars conducted by Apollo Clinic Network, which is All India. You can access that online. Lastly, the classes by NBMS every week is there as well. And last but not the least, the work environment which I am working is very good. There is no such toxicity. And today, after three years, when I think about my own decision of going for DNB or MDMS or choosing DNB with whatever rank I got, I'm really happy that I made that decision three years back. And I want you all also to consider making those choices so that you don't compromise on a dream branch and also move ahead in your career with the best options you have with the ranks in hand. I hope this video was useful and you have got a perspective of what DNB is all about. And please share it with your friends and also please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon and keep supporting in this way. Till then, all the best for the counselling. May you get the best possible branch in the ranks which you have got. And for students who couldn't do well, this is not the end. You have to bounce back and bounce back stronger. Till then, take care. Cheers.